Hi, everybody. Thanks again for tuning into Cameras Rolling. Very excited about my guest tonight. <laughs> it is his fourth time here. I think fourth time. Uh, Brian Miller Magic. Welcome, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Thank you. Thanks Sit so down. much. <laughs> Sit down to the audience. <laughs> I had almost forgotten that you did that until I, know. I just started having it. Never it. Like, gets oh, yeah. old. Thank you, everybody. Never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for having me back. This I'm is it's it's been a while this time. It's been a long time, and you know I've got to say when when I think of the first time I met you, <laughs> well, and you know, and I don't want to date myself too much, but I do feel like like a mama's bride because <laughs> you were so different, yeah. and. You were, and I remember you were at Frogs or Froggies. Yeah, Iron Frog Tavern I, in Sinsbury. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that old Froggies. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah. and you know, and it, 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 you were to me just. I'm thinking, oh, this is so wonderful. It's a small town, <laughs> and you know, and you're so interesting because you're so diverse in your in your interests, which we will get to. But now, you have you've done a, a TED Talks. That's got 2.7 million views. It did really well. Which is? <laughs> it took me as, that's not false humility. It, it genuinely took me by surprise. Oh my, it, yeah. it's, you know, because people yeah. really want to have th that many views. So, it re yeah. so it's still a fluke. Really? Yeah. Because there's, I mean, cause we're so saturated now. They, they are. They're really yeah. saturated. I forget. At, at the time, I did mine in, in 2015. That's how long it's been. Like, that, that, that's almost, um, it's so funny. That, that's new for us to talk about. Yeah. But, uh, but, it's, but, it's but now it's, it, it's, it's, almost, it's over two years old now. Um, but it does feel fairly recent because of how, how much it exploded. And yeah, I got invited to give a small TEDx talk right here in, in Connecticut. I don't know if... It was at Manchester High School? Yeah, it was at Manchester High yeah. School. I, and, and I don't know if people know the difference between TED and TEDx very much because you just kind of see that red TED logo and you just go, it's a TED talk. But right. the, the, diff the big difference is TED, the TED -E TED is TED Global and that's uh, Technology Entertainment Design. That's what it stands for. And, then, and they do just one or two, maybe three annual conferences that are global and those are really reserved for people who've made groundbreaking strides in their field physicists on the cutting edge mm -hmm. and medical and everything but then there's TEDx and the X stands for like independently organized events and so small communities all over the world can organize their own TEDx conference but they have to get permission they have to actually submit a proposal oh. to TED global and uh, just because you've done one last year doesn't mean you're guaranteed one the next year you have to resubmit every year to have the right to do one because they require that you adhere to all of their guidelines right. and you know to try to keep it at that that TED yeah, level yeah it's such high quality yeah and so um, mine was actually held at Manchester High School that does it now uh, uh, for three or four years in a row now, uh, and um, it, it was amazing because I, I, I just I gave a 14-minute talk to 80 high school kids in Manchester, Connecticut, and overnight I went from a national, a relatively successful national touring act right. to a very successful a global, global international touring. It was it was bizarre. It is, and, and <laughs> I've, I've got to say, and also be, being a personal friend of yours on yeah, Facebook, yeah. Be, besides being like, oh, when you <laughs> when you got married, your beautiful wife. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> you know, but first it's like, well, head on down to frogs, and now you're you're in Iraq. You're all over the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I, you are everywhere. <laughs> you're so successful. It, it was uh, it, it was it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. I was I was in Bahrain. It wasn't Iraq, but it was the Middle oh, East. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's 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 okay. okay. I just I don't want somebody to be like he lied about being in Iraq. <laughs> that's that's the world we live in now. I don't need that. Yeah. Um, no, no. But it was I was in the Middle East. I was uh, Bahrain, with I've yeah. done I've done three tours for the American troops uh, overseas now. Uh, you know, bouncing around. Military bases, uh, working with Navy Entertainment. Oh, that must um, be incredible! It's unbelievable, uh, you know. And uh, what's crazy about it is that anytime somebody finds that out or, or mentions, they always thank me, which I I'm always waving it off because it, it's like entertainers go over there. Yeah, yeah, we donate our time, but uh, we're only. I can only make a living as a magician, which is admittedly a silly thing to do, because <laughs> there are people risking their lives defending our freedom. You can't, right. you know, you know, if you live in certain parts of the world, a lot of the places that I go to where the troops are, you can't mess around with being a professional magician. You have to worry about, you know, surviving right. every day and living and food and water. So the fact that I can even be a professional magician, uh, let alone do it 
at this kind of a level, that's only because of them. So when entertainers go overseas and do these tours, it's really to say thank you to them right. and give back to them. Oh, so. it must be just an extraordinary experience. Yeah, and most it, gracious audiences you'll I, ever you know, have. I was, oh. was going to say yeah. that, you know, because, you yeah. know, me, I'll also being being an actress, you know, the, yeah. the audience is 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 the, the, is the other character. Yeah. But it's, it's a whole different breathing being every time that you perform. And every time. Every time. And you yeah. can usually sense it in like the first 30 seconds. 30 out. seconds, yeah. <laughs> yeah, within within 30 seconds of being on stage, I can be like, this is going to be a rough show. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a rough you crowd. Know, and, it, and it's interesting yeah. because even though you know magic or comedy, the kind of variety arts, we're a little bit, we're not as rigid as sticking to the scripts that you know right. as an actor you might be. It's still very similar that even though you're required to stick to pretty much a word for word script every night, I know because I have so many friends who are actors and I'm relatively mm -hmm. involved in the local theater community here. You do a lot with Playhouse. I've right. been involved with Playhouse. Um, and. Uh, I know from actors that even though they're sticking to the same words, that the audience's energy level changes the show it every does. night. Yes. Same words, totally different show. So, so yeah. what is it like for the troops? It must be just extraordinary. Yeah, they, yeah. Um, they. It depends on which which base you're on. So some bases, a lot of bases I've been to, uh, they have families. The families actually live there. The kids live there, and so on those bases, they really. Um, they have the shows are designed for the families and right. so even though i'm not a kids magician i've never been a kids magician i work for corporate and private events and stuff um I, you know you do a kind of a kid heavy friendly family right. show yeah. and that's the only time i ever do the kid heavy shows um and that's great as long as you can get a couple of kids up on stage and make them go oh, you know you, nice. you you win those right. shows you yeah. know you, you don't have to to do much but then there's there are some bases like when i was in um uh, Djibouti, Africa, which is one of the more dangerous places in the world. That was actually the only only time on any of the three tours I actually felt uncomfortable. Not on base. On base you feel safe because you're on a military base. Yeah. But it was landing at that airport, waiting to get through customs and getting from the airport to the base and then waiting again to get back out at the airport that I was really on edge. Um, I if bet. You, I, I mean, I, I don't know, I didn't know my geography well before I started traveling like that. American <laughs> students, we don't know our geography yeah, very we well don't, yeah. at all. But uh, everything's here. <laughs> everything's yeah. here. Everywhere else in the world, they know everything they, about the whole world. It's exactly, amazing. Right. We know nothing. But, <laughs> but Djibouti is like, it borders on Somalia and these other countries. Oh, it's like a Somalia, really, so. really uh, bad place. There's like a, a, a there's a strait, a, a wa you know, water right there that, uh, that ships pass through that that's a, a major problem and I'm not going to pretend like I know that much about it um, uh, I'll just babble and incoherently right. <laughs> but you can look up Djibouti and you'll see why like e almost every allied nation has a military base in this one tiny country um, because it's such a dangerous dangerous spot so so there the, the point of that roundabout story uh -huh. was that there are no kids or families allowed that is exclusive and it's a closed base right n uh, uh, nobody's allowed. Once you're on base, you're not allowed to leave until your actual papers are, you know, allowed to leave. And so, um, we packed the room with 400. It was standing room only, practically out the doors. Right. It was 400 troops that uh, that that came out to that show because that was the thing for for probably months. I mean, you know, right. They, because it's such a tough spot, a lot of entertainers aren't willing to go to those areas. Like, going to Europe is easy. Spain, Italy, Greece, that's fun. Yeah. Even the Middle East, Bahrain was beautiful. It was extraordinary. And Asia was amazing. Yeah, and I was going to say, have you ever been to South Korea, too? I did South Korea. Yeah. I did mm -hmm. Guam and Singapore. Those are all wonderful, amazing right. places. South Korea sounds scary, but it no, was extraordinary. It's not. Yeah. No, it's um, so... But, developed, yeah. but Djibouti, they don't get as many of the entertainers as they do on the rest of the bases, and so they were so grateful that I was there. Oh, they packed out wonderful. the shows. It was amazing. So wow, and yeah. and now, and speaking of your act, okay, your your, your TED talks. What yeah. what it's well, it's so extraordinary, in which it really resonated with me, and people can identify with it. When you when you use your act now, do you, do you talk more about how you've learned to communicate with people? and relate to people and listen to people through your magic? Yeah, it, it's interesting. So um, for those who haven't seen it, which is probably pl plenty of people, it's it, 2.7 million sounds like a lot, but a, a, as a percentage yes. of the population, <laughs> right. it's almost nobody, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, 
so if you you know it, it's called how to magically connect with anyone is is the uh, the idea of the, uh, the the talk and what I talk about so I, I do corporate keynote speaking and youth motivational speaking and oh on Brian and, Miller magic.com so yes Brian okay. Miller magic.com <laughs> okay. is my website I have a separate website for my speaking stuff but you can find it from okay. there and everything right. okay. but um, I appreciate the plug yeah. <laughs> I do I appreciate that um, I'm much less comfortable plugging myself at, uh, I'll plug you oh, appreciate that'll, it that'll, so okay go on <laughs> so the uh, what I talk about in my speeches is how to make meaningful connections with people in your life by learning the tools of a magician. What magicians uh, do, we've magicians have mastered the ability to take on other perspectives in order to create wonder and connect with the audience. Right. And what I realized many uh, years ago is that I, ha I had struggled all my life. I, I was bullied as a kid really, really badly, and that led to a variety of issues that are really not the point now. But what it eventually led to is when I started getting um, good at magic, good at guitar, and all of a sudden uh, in high school, I was, I was getting really good at magic. And so suddenly, after being bullied my entire life and, and having you know, no friends, uh, all of a sudden, I was popular. Everybody wanted to, to meet me. They wanted to say, right. oh, you're the kid doing magic. Show me a trick. And what happens is when you take a kid who's been bullied their whole life and never had any friends, and you suddenly overnight go, everybody wants to talk right. to you. Right. It must be very confusing. It's very confusing, and you easily develop an ego, right? You start mm -hmm. thinking, because everybody keeps telling you how amazing you are. And what, you, what I didn't realize, and this happens to a lot of people, uh, what I didn't realize is they weren't saying you're amazing. What they were saying was that trick was amazing. But I heard you're amazing, right? Mm -hmm. And so your, your head grows. And that started leading to, through high school, college, um, a really difficult time with relationships where I kept, you know, having people in my life and then losing them. And I couldn't figure out why people kept leaving, like, right. you know. And eventually what I realized was that, that I wasn't making the people in my life feel cared about. I right. did care about them, but they didn't feel cared about. And, and that's what a lot of people who are in the situation who've had that experience get oh, wrong. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, uh, like, uh, you know, thinking, no, I, I do care about you. I do understand you. But it doesn't matter unless they feel it. Mm -hmm. And I, that's when I realized I could take the tools I had mastered as a magician to connect with audiences. Right. And to take on their perspective to create wonder. And I could apply that to my personal life. And when I did that, it, it just changed my life forever. And... Um, and so that's what I talk about. And so my speeches are, are fun. A lot of corporate keynotes, they love it because uh, I'm not just a talking head with a PowerPoint. I do live magic demonstrations right. and audience interactions, tell funny stories yeah. while driving home a, a, a point. And similarly, educators love me for youth motivational speaking right. for that middle school, high school, even some of the colleges. Um, because we're living in this increasingly just kind of distracted, disconnected world. Yes, exactly. Um, and I love my phone. You love your phone. I'm yes. not. It's not. It, it's, it's a time and place kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And and we've got a generation that's growing up that really doesn't know how to make meaningful connections that will hurt them down the road. And right. so, uh, yeah, doing. I really get a lot of enjoyment out of the youth motivational speaking. Right. Um, delivering a, 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 a gentler message than when you're at corporate. Corporate, you can go message heavy because they that's what they want. Yes. But for for the younger folks, uh, I'm able to do. I try to I try to be the kind of motivational speaker I wish I had seen when I was that age. Because when I was in high school, if you said we've got a presentation today, uh, 45 minutes, it's a motivational speaker. I would be like, motivational speaker, good night, time yeah. for a nap. That's it for me. Yes. You know. <laughs> Right. So I try to be, you know, I do magic and tell jokes and use audience interaction while kind of sliding in an important message that almost the kids don't even realize they're learning this important message because I'm wrapping it in all the right. fun stuff. So, yeah, so that's that's gone really well. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's interesting because you you say that you, the ego got big, but yeah. I was I, I was bullied, too. So I know what yeah. that feels like. It's a, sure. and, and you're afraid. There's a lot of fear. Ego is always built out of built, insecurity. Built out of fear. Yeah. And what I've seen just from getting to know you is you've beaten those fears. And yeah. you're so comfortable now within your own skin. It's 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 wonderful to see. I've, but but that's how you really help other people. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's it's, it's, it's one hundred percent a confidence deep connect, issue. A deep connection with people, which I really, really appreciate. And yeah. yeah. So okay. so tell me about so there, there's some different types of magic. That you there are. Okay. There, there, I mean, there are a lot of different types of magic. I, I am primarily a sleight of hand magician. Uh, okay. as, as you know, I've been on the show before, and I, you know, manipulating, um, you know, uh, objects and uh, and you know things like that that are just you know skill based. Right. Um, but. So I have a background in mathematics and philosophy. Yes. So that's what I went to school. People are always blown away that I went to college. I'm like, no, I did. I, I never used <laughs> well, anything and, and I went math, to school for. But <laughs> I mean, yeah. you don't 
Yeah, I have You don't a, seem like a math guy. You know what's funny about yeah. that? So <laughs> my father is a PhD in math. My mom is a computer scientist. My father, my father's a professor of computer science. Uh, so math, uh, my aunt is a math teacher yeah. um, uh, here, here in Connecticut, actually. Uh, so math runs in my blood. So I was always naturally good at it. I just never liked it. But so I got this, this uh, I got a, a degree in math just because it was easy and my parents kind of wanted me to, but I didn't love it. So I got a dual degree in philosophy, which I did love. And I thought I was going to be a philosophy professor. That was what I wanted to do with my life. So I actually got accepted into a PhD program for philosophy right out of undergrad. And I turned it down to pursue magic. That was the big moment where I had to right. make a decision in my life because you can't do a PhD and be a professional did magician you, at the same did time. Did your parents support you on that? Did you feel support? They do now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they yeah, did. You know, it's my, easy to, it's my, easy my to joke had, about. My parents had a hard time um, with, I, with I, me I, doing yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, stuff. I joke about it, but it, it was a tough phone call home. Yeah. The, the, the toughest part about it was that I had been accepted into a PhD program. It right. wasn't like I wasn't capable. What, what, the, kind of what their, their feeling was, was, are you sure you want to throw away this gift very few people can do a PhD. You are able to. We birthed you with the ability to do this thing. Right. Are you sure you want to throw that away? And I was kind of like, yeah, but equally, it seems equally difficult to make it as a magician, and that's what I really want to try. Uh, and so oh. they were they were supportive, kind of with a, um, yeah, follow your dreams. You're young. You have no commitments. Basically, it was kind of one of these. If and when you fail, you'll still have time to go back to school because you're young enough. Yes. And I think. Not that they thought I would fail, but I think everybody just expected you would fail trying to make it as a magician. And they were kind of like, yeah, but when you fail, we'll be here and we'll help you get back on your feet and go to school. And then I just never, oh, well, I, I, I didn't never fail. I failed lots of times, but I, right. never, I never failed out of trying. Right, right. Um, and, uh, and then somewhere within about the first two to three years of trying to make it as a magician, when I started getting a little bit bigger and more successful and I wasn't worried about feeding myself anymore, um, suddenly the, the tune changed and, and uh, they started getting very vocal. Now, I mean, they were always supportive, I, you know, but they got very vocally supportive and very excited to tell Wonderful. people that I was a magician. Oh, and, that's great. You know, um, I love hearing that. It, 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 I think the moment it clicked for my dad was when uh, the first time we met, I was the uh, resident magician for, for Foxwoods Casino at yes. the Comedy Club. Um, at, that I stopped doing that in twenty end of twenty. Uh, 11, I think, but um, anyway, so 2012, I don't know, it was back there. Mm -hmm. And uh, But at one point, I, I, I invited my dad up from Buffalo to come visit me in Connecticut, and I, I wanted him to come see a show. And he'd seen me do close-up magic at restaurants before, but he'd never seen a show. So I invited him to my Foxwood show, and so he showed up at the, it's the biggest casino in North America, literally the largest casino in North America. And they, you know, outside the comedy club on the big, huge screen was my name in lights, Aww, Brian Miller, I magician. Yeah. And we had a sold out crowd that night and I had a killer show. Thank goodness. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it could have been a weak show that <laughs> night, but it wasn't, it was a killer show. And, and that was his first real experience you know, after I had said, I'm not going to follow what you've done. I'm not gonna follow a PhD. I'm not gonna do right. this. And that, I could see it in his eyes that he was beaming that night. Oh, that, sure. that, that was the moment that it clicked for him that I w this wasn't just a hobby for me. I right. was really, really doing this. Yeah. Well, yeah, and also, as, like, as a parent, I'm, I'm sure he thought that you, you'd have more security in life. Oh, sure. Like, yeah. That was all my mom was ever yeah. concerned about. She was exactly. like, yeah, great, be a magician, but are you going to be able to have health insurance? Right, Like, exactly. that was really all right. she was concerned exactly. about. Exactly, exactly. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, so, so it, all, it all worked out. So, so, <laughs> so tell me about some of your, what, what do you call them, brain teeth? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so okay. because I have this math background and a philosophy background, I've always been fascinated with kind of brain teasers. And I, uh, a lot of my magic show, my magic is about puzzles and games as related to magic. So, uh, let me show you a, a brain teaser. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to show you the brain teaser. I'm going to give you about one second to try okay. to figure it out. You're not going to be able to figure it out in the one second. We're only going to do one Thank second. Thank you for telling me that. Okay. <laughs> because, because we're doing a show here. So I'm not going to sit here for 20 minutes in silence and then end the show with you trying to figure it out. But I'm going to show it to you. And then what I'll do is at the end of the interview, before we're done, I will show you and your viewers how to do it so that they can show it to their friends or oh, on the holidays, at parties, or whatever. So okay. uh, I'm going to use my, my business cards uh, uh, to, sh to show you this. You don't need to use business cards, but this is what I have on me. I'm going I to like use, the color. Thank you. I'm going to use the side that does not have my contact info so it doesn't look like I'm shamelessly self-promoting. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> this is the other side. Um, so 
Hopefully the, the cameras have a view of this. What you should be able to see here is we have a row of four yes. and a row of three. Yes. Okay, six total. Now you can do this with, you can rip up a napkin and do this with six pieces of a napkin. You do this with pretzels or coins. It, it doesn't have to be business cards or anything. Row of four, row of three. Here's your task. You only get to move one card once. Like that would be a move. Mm -hmm. You can move one card once or uh, this would be a move. Mm -hmm. In moving one card once, you must make two rows of four. And the look on your face is exactly <laughs> the look everybody gives. Your eyes pop out of your face like a cartoon. And what's funny about this is that people immediately go, impossible. And the thing is, this is not one of those brain teasers where there's no answer. There's right, nothing, right. There's yeah. nothing like, oh, you have to add an extra one. There's no adding extra ones. You don't have to rip anything. Like I say, you could do this with pennies. You could do it with you right. know, the pretzels at the bar or so, whatever. Right. So. so four rows. Yeah. Yeah. So so row of uh, row of four, row of three. Move one piece once somewhere in order to make two rows of four. You have to make two rows of four out of that. So people but at home watching this mathematically on mathematically that. Does, yeah, it just yeah mathematically uh, and philosophically and almost uh, metaphysically, it, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot. Uh, theatrically, like, uh, all this, the leads. <laughs> this, this head's going to explode. <laughs> okay. So, all right. so uh, I'll, I'll let people kind of think about that, and they, they can kind of try it at home if they're watching this on, on TV. If they're watching it online, they can pause it, get some stuff, try it. Uh, somewhere at the end of this interview, before we're done, I will actually show the solution. Okay. I'll show them, and then they can show their friends and stuff. Oh, like great. So, well, you know, kind of because a, our, our interview is going so fast, you yeah. know, we're, we're down to like only about eight minutes left. Are already. we? Oh, good. Yeah. So in a few minutes, so it won't be too long. We'll all yes. remember what I said. So that'll be. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, but, but, that, but go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. so, so it, in, in the meantime, though, uh, why, don't, why don't we show you a trick? Okay, because, show me something. Uh, you know, so uh, I'll show you a, uh, a trick, like a proper magic trick. Okay. Just like, a, like a magic trick. So. Is there a rabbit? No, no, oh. there's not. No, they, okay. uh, I don't, I don't like. Animals. No, I'm kidding. That's, 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 that's how you get viewers to tune out when you say something like that. It's like if you're not a dog person and you say, uh, and, you know, if you're not a dog person, if you say, I don't like dogs, for some reason, everybody hears, I want to hurt puppies. Oh, like, exactly. No, that's not, that's not what yeah. I said. I just don't like dogs. I don't wish them harm. Exactly. No, 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 no. Or it's, or it's, I'm against <laughs> animal cruelty. So is that opposed to people who are for it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. I suppose all those people. I'm for animal <laughs> exactly. cruelty. <laughs> There's never been a point counterpoint on animal cruelty. Exactly. Um, so let me. Do you want to mix these up before we do anything? Or? Sure. Yeah, please do. Yeah, I know you don't trust me. You've seen me before, no. so you may as well mix the. Oh, I'm mixing these up big time. <laughs> don't mess Good. with that mix up. There we go. Okay. All right, Marcia, choose your destiny. I'm just sick of saying pick a card. Isn't well, that the no, better way to I'm, say it though? Yeah, it sounds it sounds wonderful. You can, you can look at it, remember it, show it to the Should show, I it show to the it? viewers. Yeah, by all means. I'm not in it when, uh, in on it with the camera card okay. or anything. Okay. All okay. right. All right, you can place it back for me and just pause right there, pause. Take a mental photograph of this image. Okay, of us place doing it back. This. Yeah, yeah, okay. that was good. Okay. You, okay. you, you, you like my camera sound effect? You <laughs> yes, like I liked it. That, that was that was my gift to you tonight. Okay, People, thank she was you. like, "Where did Brian go? I thought he was a camera." <laughs> I'm gonna go through the. I don't do impressions. I'm gonna go through the cards. I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna mix them up, face up and to face down. Now this is kind of a strange thing to do. If somebody did this with your cards before you played a game, you'd be very upset because it's it's a mess. We've got right. cards going face up and to face down. They're going face down and to face up. They're going uh, front to front. They're going back to back. They're going every which way. But that was not your card. No. No, 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 no. Uh, place your thumb and first finger out for me like this. Perfect. Palm up if you could. Perfect. Hold on to the uh, seven and just kind of wave it over the pack. Pause. Look what you just did. You can swing around. Look what you just did. Boom. We went back in time. 48 seconds ago when all the cards were still facing the same direction. Right. But we went so far back in time, we actually went back to the beginning of the trick. Remember this moment? Yes. Yeah, the chk. You didn't yes. even put your card in the deck yet. Turn it over. Oh my God, that's, wow. <laughs> Time travel's weird, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We've actually had this conversation three times today. Yeah, you don't exactly. even know. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you want to mess with somebody, you tell a time travel joke. That's yeah. Like, no. <laughs> and you're like, I'm, I'm sick of myself now. <laughs> so. Okay, so we, we only have a few minutes left. So what is this? 
All right, so so for for our, for our viewers to wow wow right. their guests, especially over did dysfunctional holidays. Yes, season. yes, over when you need to entertain <laughs> yes. all the people you forgot you didn't know or exactly. you remembered that you didn't like. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we've got a row of four and a row of three. Uh, a lot of people try all kinds of things. Uh, some people get creative and they'll try to go like this and say, "Oh, it looks like a four. I don't know what people do. Uh, you know, they'll they'll go like this, and I don't know why. That's not an answer." So. Here's how you do it. Okay. Row of four, row of three, you need to make two rows of four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, so it's just by putting it on it. Exactly. Oh, that is a brain teaser. And see, what I love about this is the reaction that you just had is very different from the reaction most people have with brain teasers. A lot of people, when they find out the answer to a brain teaser, they just go, they get almost annoyed yeah, that like, they didn't Ugh. figure it out. Right. But what this one does is it gives people, this, this is actually a brain teaser that works in the same principle as magic. It gives people a sense of, uh, almost a sense of wonder or amazement because it was so different from anything you had considered. And right. the way that this works is if you're going to try to do this for your friends. Okay. When you set it up, you say row of uh, four, row of three, and then you say, you get to move one piece once. You say move, but you demonstrate sliding. And when you oh. demonstrate sliding. It's the suggestion. It's the suggestion. Yes. What people's brains do is they go from three dimensions down to two, and now they can only see this limited perspective of right. things moving on a two-dimensional surface. And it's almost impossible to get yourself back out of that limited perspective that I've set it up in. So it's actually a verbal misdirection. So this is a brain teaser that works in the same principles as, uh, as magic, which is why I like this one. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. And I, and I love the way when, when you say it's, suggested you know mm -hmm. you you must be like like a subliminal slayer <laughs> because you know they're I, gonna put I that up that. on the screen brian miller subliminal slayer Sub <laughs> i don't know what that means <laughs> a superhero but but yeah. you know because most most people and um are 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 so afraid of getting tricked but yeah. when when you're showing it and we we look forward to seeing what it is it's it, it it's not as fun for you because you know what yeah. You know what the thing is, but. Yeah, well, and, and that's the, the thing, thing is that, is, like, like you said, <laughs> that's, well, that's what the thing is. That's the, yeah. Well, the thing is the thing. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, well, you know, like you just said, a lot of people don't like being being tricked. And the, the key to, to being a magician, I think, is often figuring out how to um, give people the sense of wonder without them feeling tricked. Because magic is beautiful. The idea of magic that, that there's something that you know can't happen, but you're seeing it happen anyway. The, it, it's kind of like, it, magic is, is just childhood dreams come to life when you're a kid and you just kind of think right, of impossible right. things. And then you can become an adult and you learn, oh, none of that stuff is possible. It's possible with a magician. And it's the only time that stuff is possible. Because it, it's possible True. in the movies, but in the movies you know it's a green screen, mm -hmm. right? You don't ever really, but, but when magic happens, it really happens in front of you. It's not a screen. It's right. not, a, it's not right. there's, no, there's nothing else happening here. And that, that's the beauty of it, so. And that's, yeah, and, and pe people get so, you know, bogged down in, yeah. in, their, in their own perceptions. Exactly. And that's, and that's what I love so much about the TED Talks. Now, now um, you, you go all over, you've got your, your BrianMillerMagic.com. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what about if people want to see a show? Do you still go to tables? Can they find out on that site? No. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we're done. The interview's <laughs> over. Um, un unfortunately, so for the most part, I, I don't do very many public, uh, open to the public shows anymore. Uh, however, when I do, which is few and far between, when I do, I always post them on my social media accounts. So if you follow me, it's like uh, Facebook at B Miller Magic. Okay. Um, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram at B Miller Magic. That's when I am doing open to the public stuff uh, here, uh, you know, in uh, in Connecticut or New England. Right. That's where I post that. Uh, but I don't have any public schedules because I don't do public events. So there's yeah. But they can go on your YouTube channel to see your act. But they can yes. go on my YouTube channel, which is just Brian Miller Magic. If you just search That's Brian it? Miller Magic on YouTube, uh, I upload three to five videos a week. I have cameras that follow me all over the world on tour that show you kind of the behind the scenes of what it looks like to be a success successful but non-famous entertainer. <laughs> That's the idea of my channel because like, we, like all, we all know what famous looks like, right? Yes. Ah, private jets and this and right, that. Right. But I, when I was a kid, I never knew, I never understood that there were people, actors, comedians, magicians, jugglers that make full-time livings, they support their families, they live comfortably, but you've never heard of them and you never will. And I always wonder what which, does that life look like? Which is the best like? position to be in, isn't is, it? Doesn't it? Yes. It's, for me, it seems like it. Because you can still like observe it. others and pe people are gawking at you. Yeah, yeah. I got recognized at an airport once. Once right. I got recognized at an airport for the for TED the, talk, for the TED facts. and uh, and uh, then well, after he walked away, I thought, well, it's all downhill from well, here. Well, you know what, Brian, <laughs> Brian Miller, 
The world is your oyster. Now you've been on cameras rolling, so oh. watch out. It's hey. Ernie Paparazzi. <laughs> No, nobody cares that much about me. <laughs> I'm so, so glad you came back. Thanks so much and for having I, me yeah, back. It was a real pleasure. Yeah. yeah. All right. And everybody have a good evening. Thanks again for tuning in.